Africa must unite. I mean, the title says it all, and that message is still valid today. But neocolonialism was <laughs> in part responsible for the coup <laughs> because it exposed, you know, the workings of international finance capital in Africa, actually gave charts showing the, the network of these big foreign companies that were exploiting Africa's resources. And that was probably the final straw in deciding this dangerous man has got to be removed, you know. <laughs> we cannot have Africa united or in control of its own resources. And so that was a factor because it had such an impact in America. The American government immediately stopped aid to Ghana when that book really? was published, yes, and lodged a very strong diplomatic um, uh, complaint, you know, through their embassy in Accra, mm -hmm. complaining about the book. I don't know any other book, really, that has created such a, a political stir as that one. Challenge of the Congo? <laughs> well, that wasn't perceived as such a great threat. You see, it was concentrated on the Congo. It did expose Union Minier, you know, and how the mm -hmm. Belgian company had um, exploited the Congo's wealth. But this book was really dynamite. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, um, but it was the final straw in a big build-up that had been going on for some time against his policies and especially his pan-Africanism which was perceived as a great threat. I think it is still perceived as a threat because once Africa is united it'll be in control of its own resources and that's the last thing really that these economic interests want.